Got 10 shots at 20 yards with the SIG P320. PSA 7.62 by 39 upper. Let's get this going. So I'm gonna try my best to make this short and simple, just the way I like it. I'm gonna get through the features as soon as I possibly can on this new PSA 7.62 by 39 upper and get out to the range to what matters most and what most people care about, the accuracy. So now, before I start this series on the PSA 7.62 by 39 uh, PSA AR pistol upper, if you haven't uh, watched my videos before, I highly suggest taking a look at the five part series on the 223 10 and a half inch, one and seven twist PSA upper. Uh, that five-part series, which is very detailed on the PSA AR pistol. Not only does it go into reloading and load development, but there's a wealth of information on the PSA AR pistol itself. So that being said, all I did is swap over my PSA uh, lower with the SBA3 brace over to this new PSA 7.62 by 39 upper and changed out the P-Mag for a C-Defense uh, steel 10 round magazine. So I did a tremendous amount of research on what magazine works best with these PSA lowers and uppers for the 7.62 by 39. And with my search results, the C-Defense uh, steel 7.62 by 39 magazines uh, sounds like they work the best for these PSA AR pistols and 7.62 by 39. And so far, the fit and function is amazing. And if you haven't had the chance to watch that five part series in the 223 PSA AR pistol yet, um, in my opinion, the SBA3 AR pistol brace is the best that money can buy right now, especially being that it's adjustable. And I also changed out the PSA trigger for the Rock River Arms match trigger. Now before I go over this upper, I figure out a quick go over the optics and the backup iron sights. Now once again, with PSA and their amazing deals, I've yet to find a better deal online for the Romeo Red Dot 5. I was able to get this shipped for $119, which is mind blowing deal. Also, on the backup iron sights, the Magpul uh, front and rear backup iron sights, I was able to get these shipped for a little over $50. And I'm sure they're doing this in quantity over quality. And if PSA, if you're listening to this, keep it going. Now, I've always been a big fan of the Aimpoint Pro red dot and also the Vortex uh, Strike Fire 2 red dot. But the more and more that I use this Romeo Red Dot 5, especially this amazing deal you can get off PSA, shipped for $119, uh, the more I fell in love with this Red Dot, especially with the features it comes with. I mean, yes, I wish it had uh, flip up caps, but I can live with the bikini caps. It's fine, especially when I'm just mostly shooting from a bench. Um, 
The big features though for me is that the fact that it comes with this lower one third co-witness mount and also the low base mount, the fact that it comes with both options is amazing. And also it has an auto on and off feature. So you don't have to physically shut the red dot off. It'll actually do it for you. And the second you pick up the AR pistol that the red dot turns on. And also the big feature, at least for me, is the two MOA red dot. You know, when you're doing detail work, shooting groups, uh, just having fun at the range is a weekend warrior type of thing. I found that if you co-witness the rear uh, backup iron sights with a smallest aperture, aperture if possible, with the light setting set at the lowest possible setting, that it creates the most perfect red dot for shooting groups. Now as for the 7.62 by 39 M lock rail, it comes with a supper. It's very similar to my 223, other than I noticed that my 223 had a QD uh, swivel for a swing where the 7.62 does not. You know, obviously it's not a big issue. You can always add it to the side with an M lock rail. Other than that, I did notice the difference of the gas block location between the 223 and the 7.62. Uh, with my 223, it was more in the middle. With the 7.62 by 39, it was pushed all the way forward. You know, obviously, I'm sure that has something to do with gas pressure and trying to make that gas tube as long as possible. Now, with that being said, being that the gas block on the 7.62 by 39 was pushed forward as far as possible, damn near right in the front of the M lock rail itself. I had issues mounting the Magpul bipod adapter in the very front M-lock position. Uh, it was impossible for me to get the Magpul bipod adapter bolts in there. It, they simply ended up hitting the gas block itself, so I had to move those back one M-lock space back on the handrail itself. And even moving those back with a larger diameter of the 7.62 barrel, I end up having to grind down those bolts on the Magpul bipod adapter itself to make sure that they cleared the barrel. And the 7.62 by 39 PSA upper comes with your standard bird cage. As for the PSA hybrid KS47 bolt carry group and the bolt itself, it was a pleasant surprise. Now as for the bolt and the bolt carrier group itself, it's all pretty standardized, it's staked, blah, blah, blah. It's all really standard. Uh, one thing I did notice is their website says that their bolt carrier groups are chrome lined. I mean, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that this is not chrome lined. Uh, but regardless, uh, this bolt carrier group and the bolt itself comes with a very ultra smooth, uh, very easy to clean finish on not only the bolt carrier group itself, but also the bolt and even inside the bolt carrier group It's a very easy to clean surface and like I mentioned in my other 223 five-part series PSA AR pistol upper with its bolt it damn near looked like looked like it was bead blasted uh, This bolt almost looks like it's been bead blasted you know, as long as it doesn't uh, affect performance, I guess I'm not totally concerned other than uh, ease of cleaning the bolt. And that is not the case with the 7.62 by 39 bolt. It is very smooth. It's almost like a mirror finish. And uh, it is very, very easy to clean. So the fact that I was able to get the 7.62 by 39 upper shipped for $300, Romeo Red Dot 5 shipped for $120, and the front and rear Magpul backup iron sights shipped for roughly $60, $480 for a 7.62 by 39 upper, it's a fun little toy at the range for plinking. Now, why go through all of this when I already have this in 223. Main reason is this, which I've pretty much covered in my PSA AK-47 video. The mere fact that I can get Wolf steel case ammunition and 7.62 by 39 full metal jacket 
1,000 rounds shipped from Brownells for $185, which I believe roughly works out to $3.80 for every 20 round box. Make some very inexpensive plinking at the range. And if you watched my videos before on my 7.62 by 39 PSA AK-47 with its Wolf steel case ammunition, and also my five part series in the 223 PSA AR pistol upper, I'm thinking that this setup with inexpensive Wolf case ammunition, its accuracy should fall between those two firearms, the PSA AK-47 rifle and the PSA 10 and a half inch 223 PSA upper. <laughs> and another good reason is just simply another reason to buy a firearm. <laughs> Enough said, let's take this to the range. Two o'clock edge on the inside. That didn't even hit the target. What the f is going on? I gotta walk down for a sec. Yeah. Well, my first two groups were running spectacular. And now my third group, I was wondering why the heck I was not hitting the target whatsoever. And this definitely explains why. <laughs> the uh, the handguard bolt got tightened up. A so it looks like I'm not gonna have to retighten the handguard bolts and go back to the track. But that's not good for PSA. But definitely not torqued enough. Well, thank God I just happened to have an Allen set with me in my range bag. And I checked out these uh, bolts on the handguard. And I'm not sure who at PSA is torquing these down, but they're definitely not doing their job. There was zero torque on these bolts whatsoever. So if you happen to uh, pick up one of these PSA uppers 100%, make sure you check out your bolts uh, before you hit the range so you don't run into the same issue that I just did. Okay, so we got this retorque back down. You know, it's not a huge issue. Uh, it's something you can easily fi fix even out in the field, but still, this is a quality control issue I think PSA really needs to keep an eye on before they send these uppers out to their customers. All right, let's try this again. Looks oh, dead center. Uh, to the left, to the bottom, two inches. Okay, you're to the right about the same height below the other one just about. All right, let's check this out. Run down the 50 yard line. Okay, so for some steel case, really cheap, uh, 7.62 by 39 uh, Wolf ammunition, I'd say this is pretty damn good, uh, especially on this top left group. You know, I'm gonna guess it's a little over an inch. Uh, worst group here is probably the bottom right in my last group. Uh, I'm going to guess probably a little over two, two and a half inches. Uh, but for some really inexpensive steel case wolf ammunition that I can get for $3.80 per 20 round box or 1,000 rounds for $185 shipped, I'd say that's very acceptable. And you know, other than the handguard coming loose and you know, destroying the first six by five. Um, it's an easy fix, but it's definitely a quality control issue with PSA that they need to address before they ship those uppers out to their customers. But 
Let's take this out, uh, to, or take this back to the reloading room. We'll score up to six by five and go from there. Oh well, you know that was very interesting, uh, especially with the handguard slipping off the barrel. But anyways, you know, not a big deal. Obviously just tighten up these two bolts here and keep on going. But regardless, it never should have happened. Well I would say the 7.62 by 39 PSA 10 and a half inch one and nine and a half inch twist barrel did phenomenal, especially with inexpensive Wolf steel case ammunition. And in my experience, especially with more inexpensive firearms, after about two to 300 rounds down the barrel tube itself, that the accuracy will most likely improve to give this barrel a chance to break in. And as expected, the accuracy fell somewhere between my PSA 223 10 and a half inch upper and my PSA AK-47 and 7.62 by 39 with the same Wolf steel case ammunition. And with all that said, I would say that this upper is a tremendous success and the fact that I can shoot Wolf ammunition out of an AR pistol upper at $3.80 per 20 round box is awesome. As for this upper itself and the C Products magazines, I had zero failures to feed and zero failures to eject. In all the steel cases, ejecting about seven feet away at four o'clock position. I'd say that's just about perfect. And I was actually quite surprised how soft shooting this PSA 7.62 by 39, 10 and a half inch barrel upper is. Other than the slight hiccup with the handrail, which in my opinion wasn't a big issue, the upper made it up perfectly with the lower, with very little wiggle. Other than that, stay tuned to part two, where we'll most likely run this out to the 100 yard mark and run a six by five. And please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share, and I'll see you next time.